trying to make sense of this. That's a drastic change. Three eighths, 18 inch straight shank. Talk about drill bits here. See that kind of sort of partially in focus. I was looking for a 12 inch, didn't know 18 inch was an option. Look at this, they have 24 inch. Sounds great, but 94, no. 18 inches should do this job. That should be plenty. Hey, what's up garden friends? How's every camera? behave. Jeff here, how's everybody? How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I, there's really no plan for this video, which sometimes those turn out to be some of my favorite videos. Sometimes y'all enjoy them the most too. Typically middle of the week, I like to focus on a type of plant or one specific project, but I realized today, the day this video comes out, it's the first day of summer. I want to double check. Sometimes I feel like it falls between the 20th and the 22nd, which I, that would be the 21st. Anyways, I think it'd be fun to just do some stuff. Do a little mini vlog. Not going to be an hour long like what I put out on a Saturday, but this is just a little bit more fun and relaxed. And I've been working on projects over the weekends. This way you can get everybody up to date with what's going on with those projects. Hang out, play with some plants go with the flow. For this weekend's vlog video after this one, I need to get out and run some errands because I know I don't need, I don't need more shrubbery, but I would like to get <laughs> these ewes planted up, up here on this hill. And I think I might need a couple more and some annuals. I'm running low on annuals for some projects. So there'll be some plant shopping going on for this weekend's video. I'm not in the mood to do all that right now. I just want to get some yard work done, play with the dogs, get in the pool, enjoy summer. Oh, the drill bit. The reasoning for that, there's an area down on the other end of the yard. You can just barely see right inside there, right above my finger, that one corner in the fence. I can't get anything to grow there, and I would like to for privacy reasons. The ground is just, it's rock hard, solid hard pan over there. The auger doesn't do anything. I use the root slayer shovel, nothing. It just, it is impenetrable. I've hacked at it with a you know the pit the thing that this thing pickaxe that helps a little but not as much as it should when it you know it's a pickaxe sometimes with really hard ground i'll take a long drill bit drill a whole bunch of little holes and that'll help loosen it up enough to be able to get in and do some digging so uh, 18 inches ought to do it that's the goal so hopefully maybe this weekend i'll have a shrub planted up in that corner and have that filled in for the first time in basically ever. I've only ever been able to put little things over there in the past. The only holes I've been able to dig have been really tiny and they haven't done great because I think the ground there is so solid that they just can't get their roots out. Really in the mood to do garden tour stuff, but it's not time yet. Gotta hold back, gotta wait till the end of the month, but there's a lot of stuff popping off out here that I haven't shown y'all and things that have just started because it went from cool to finally warm. And once that heat hit, it just boom, the garden finally woke up i should i talked about doing stuff and i'm just sitting here right now i guess i'm just feeling chatty not really feeling all that dewy that's not a thing that's not a thing people should say got some new sprinkler heads in the mail i've been trying to get a hold of these for a while I haven't been able to find anybody who would ship them here i don't know what that's about there are like three different places including amazon where i'd go to order them and they're like no we don't ship to you what it's st louis not like out in the hill country or something, whatever. I ordered these and they weren't supposed to be here until July. They showed up three days after I ordered them. How nice is that? The only thing that I'm a little confused about with this sprinkler head is had, had, what do I do? The makeup of this is different from what I'm used with the sprinkler head. This is a 12 inch riser from Rainbird. So it goes in the ground, just part, this is the demonstration, it's awkward, just deal with it. Here's the ground hose down there and then when the water pressure hits it it releases this guy right here which comes up out of the ground and waters the plants that comes up 12 inches what i'm wondering about is if i use the side inlet which is this part right here let's take that off i assume you then screw it into the bottom so that the water doesn't just shoot out the bottom it's not really an i'm confusing it's a whether or not the spots where i need these to go do i want these heads sticking up from the garden they'd be sticking up about like i just showed you like, is that gonna bother me i don't know i think it might of course it'll be better than what's going on right now i have a few sprinkler heads that just don't do anything in the area that waters from right here down to the driveway because there's a slope we can go go look at it hey turbs you done you tired <laughs> for example right here there's a sprinkler head, one that's really important because it's responsible for watering everything over here. 
it only comes up about, I don't know, maybe this far out of the ground and just blasts water to the side of this area right here because this is all sloped up fairly high. So replacing that head would mean then that this would be sticking up out of the garden at all times. And I guess may just have to deal with that. The thing is, if I'm gonna have something sticking up that high, I don't need a 12 inch riser on it. That'll be down probably another three or four inches. And then this would be all the way up like here. That's too high. So I might have to use a different kind of riser. They come in different sizes. 12 inches may have been too much for this spot. I may have to see if I can find an eight inch riser. Yeah, that might be what I need to do. That or bury this to this point so that's what's sticking up out of the ground. I'm just gonna have to take a shovel to the ground over there and see if I can even get down that far. I think I can, but I don't really know. There's a lot of pipes in the ground over here, all the plumbing from the pool and the gutters from the house. Here's what I've been working on. Been play mm, no, never mind. Hold on, not there yet. Figure if I'm gonna give some updates, I should go ahead and do that now. Since the last video, this is new. Got it, the space all cleaned up. Still not garden tour time but I figured instead of waiting until the next video to update on this, I should probably do it in the video that's right after the one that I just released. I'm trying to film here. God, the planes, it's constant. They never seem to stop. The spider plant <laughs> sitting in there, that's not gonna work. Tortoise keeps knocking it over. So this is, it's not the enclosure for the tortoise. This is just a space where I can put Colby, my tortoise, when I'm doing things where maybe I have the gate open back here, or if I'm you know, gonna go run some errands, something like that. It's not where Colby stays all day long. The majority of the day, Colby has the entire backyard to roam. The thing is I have to check on Colby a lot because it's still caught and they will dig right underneath the fence. Luckily, hard pan, so <laughs> can't do much digging up there. As I learned while planting all this stuff up there, I did this basically right after the last video came out where I got this whole space cleared up. I went ahead and I grabbed a bunch of lava rocks from around the yard, piled them up. This isn't permanently going to be big enough for Colby to stay back. But the main thing is that there's a visual barrier that tends to stop them. So I haven't at any point, it's been three days now, haven't seen Colby like walking up to the corners and just walking in place, trying to get out. Been pretty good about enjoying his life in there and being a tortoise. Colby's little safety zone, the Colby Corral. And I think it looks kind of cute. I don't hate it. I do need to get a new water bowl though. I'm having to refill this thing constantly. I have a one that I ordered. Don't know when that's going to be here, but it's a nice big shallow bowl that he can go around and walk inside of. Getting to the update, the thing I forgot to mention in the last video, these blue jangles hydrangeas up here that I planted, I did add soil acidifier. That was something a couple people had DM'd me about, so that's the answer. Yes, typically not always the best idea to add soil acidifier at the same time you're planting the hydrangeas. Some people suggest waiting a couple of years before doing that, but that color, it's just, it looks too nice. I've got to keep them blue. If they turn pink, it's fine, I guess, but I would rather they stay blue. I also planted them up with a bit of cotton burr compost, which does help to acidify the soil to a degree. So that's the update for that area. It just made more sense to do that now instead of the next video, because in the next video, I'd be like, two videos ago, this is what, no. Just the espoma soil, where is it? Here you go, this stuff, right here. Followed the directions, added a little bit more than I think I needed to. Not much to it, that should keep them blue in theory. So the color that comes out on the hydrangeas generally is determined far before those blooms have done much setting. So if you're going to try and manipulate the pH of the soil to get the color to change on them, then that's something to do fairly early in the growing season, a few months before you expect blooms on them. So regardless, what's coming out of the plant over the next few months should have remained blue either way. So it won't really be until probably September, so be able to see if they're gonna stay blue or turn pink. Hey baby, you wanna play with the ball? You gotta hold on, I gotta give Colby water. <laughs> give that a nice clean out, get some more water there. He has another bowl that's over there in the shade, so it's not like he hasn't had water. Just wanna make sure that both bowls are full. There we go, okay. Don't wanna forget about turbo. Ready, you want it? You want the ball? I know, you've been waiting. You've been a good boy, you ready? Ready? One lefty here, okay? So just hope for the best. Wasn't a good enough throw, was it? I'm sorry, I failed you. I'm so sorry, Turbo. What's do, what's wrong with you? You couldn't decide how to get in? Oh, you just feel like swimming now? That's fine, you just swim. Yep, that needed to be done. Get the water, good job. Hi, hello, yes. You know I threw a ball in there for you, right? Did you forget already about the ball? 
apparently. You, you don't want it anymore? That's cute. That's really cute. Keep doing that, Turbo. That was cute. Done. All right, I think he's done. You can get it. Go on, go jump. Get your ball. What are you going to do? You got to make up your mind. I'm sure he's got this all figured out. He knows what he's doing here. That's right. Get that water off you before you jump in. Don't want to be too wet when you get in the water. What are you going to do? It's going to go over the diving board? Oh, he can get it from the edge. But will he? Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. There you go. Good boy, Turbo. Yeah, good boy. Thanks, Turbo. All right. Okay, let's try that again. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, well, he didn't, he didn't even wait for me to throw it that time. Good boy. There you go. Good job. Nice reflexes. Okay, back to what I was doing. There were probably like 15 minutes into this video. Who even knows? Feels like I've been recording for a minute here and haven't actually done anything, but that's fine. Impatience. Yeah, that's, that's all I've been doing. Just plugging away, getting more impatience in the ground. These all got torn up when I put the new hedge in. So just starting over and planting them much closer together this time. You can see there are some spots that are kind of sparse. I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in. Oh, good boy, did you use your path? Good boy, Turbo. So what I've done here since the last clip, I went in with a smaller auger bit and made more holes. You can see all the spots that I missed trying to get this filled in. Also something that's different here than last time these are all pink and orange. Last time there was more variety, like uh, kind of like over here. You can see there's some various shades of pinks and oranges, but I just have like this orange and that pink. Well, I have more than that. That's all I have planted up in here. So I think instead of filling this in with more of the pink and orange, I need to grab one of the, I only have a couple. Actually, I think I only have one. And it's mostly pink and orange, but it's a different shade of orange so i that should be okay there's one of those well i'm not i don't want to use one but there is one of the darker pinks in there i'm gonna fill these in then this should be done with twice as many impatience as it had before and the reason i'm doing it that way is that i'm going with twice as many impatience as there were in here to begin with is because it's well it's much later in the season despite their vigor and their name you know these being plants that are very prolific and grow quickly and fill in spaces very, very quickly. I'd still like it to be looking nice sooner than later. And there are still some impatience in here that didn't get destroyed. I don't know what color they are, so I don't really know what colors to mix them up with. All I really know is I don't want to put these kind of orange ones, these more corally ones, with the really orange ones. And is this worthy of conversation? Probably not. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'd say that's pretty good. Pardon the lighting. This is the time of day. That's the way the light comes through. 5.30 in the afternoon. I think that's filled in pretty nicely. You gotta remember with impatience, it takes a while to get looking good. They end up getting so scraggly inside of these six packs, which is another reason I've been doubling up on them because they need to get into the ground. If it were a month earlier, I wouldn't double up in those holes. I've also been digging most of those holes with a large six inch auger bit. So they're not like pressed right up against each other. These are going to have less growing time by a good six weeks from when I normally plant them this year. So I don't know, I'm not all that worried about them choking each other out. If they do, then survival of the fittest. It's whatever, it'll be fine. And I need to do, oh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing, don't judge me. It's a garden, these things happen, the weeds happen. It's not the end of the world. I was about to say I need to get in here and fill this area back in as well because the dogs did a number on the ones that I had planted over there and there was a hiccup with the irrigation system this spring that didn't help things either so I think I'm going to take what I have left and take them down a little bit further this way maybe a lot further I might take them all the way to the bananas and then maybe do another row of them up top here I didn't go very high with them because I mentioned when I was planting these up about a month or so ago that I didn't know where the gingers were going to come up and I didn't want to start digging into where those ginger roots are because they had a very rough winter. You can see they're coming up very patchy, but they survived, at least most of them did, so I'm not complaining about that. I would say at this point, it's pretty safe to say that there aren't going to be any gingers coming up in this row right here. Seems unlikely. Holy frickin' weeds, man. I haven't been down here that much. I've been so focused on the berm and on the other end. This is what happens when you just go one week without weeding. I don't really care. Weeds happen, it's fine. Oh, here's the whole point. I picked up the camera and forgot to mention it. I'm wondering if I should do a row of caladiums behind here. I did that last year. Didn't get a ton of growth out of them in this berm. I did over there and in a berm behind me. Right here, not much, but look at how much more sun there is. Yeah, it's afternoon sun, but still, that's 
you know, a few more hours than it was getting last year. I have enough to go in here and plop a bunch of holes in there and, you know, just see what happens. He's having a good time, aren't you, Turbs? Doesn't exactly take all that much, as long as there's a toy and a pool, that dog's happy. All right, all finished up over here, finally. Took a while. Oh, it may not look like it, but I've actually doubled the amount of impatience over here compared to what was here before, just from simply doubling up inside of some of those holes, not all of them. I mostly only doubled up on the ones that were pretty small. And the neighbor's pool company just showed up. So things are about to get pretty noisy. That's about all there is to see. I also did a row of caladiums behind everything I planted, I think like 50 or 75 here and another 50 or 75, something like that over there. Also did a smooch begonia on each side of the steps here, slightly different light. So it'll be interesting to see how they perform. And I've also noticed when I came out this morning that several of these were dug up. So I'm thinking there's a critter out here that's maybe tearing these up and I've been blaming the dogs this whole time, and we've seen the dogs run through them. Probably multiple causes for what's going on there. I did see a tiny little baby possum down the street a couple weeks ago, and I've never seen a possum here before, so that maybe, I don't know. It wasn't a big deal. The roots weren't torn up. The plant, it was one of these impatience which just flopped over, so it's an easy fix. But anyways, th that's all done. Let's go do something else now. Well, that was fun. I can't wait to see how everything grows in over the... Why did I hit record and then just set everybody down? I was... I got distracted. My bad. Things are getting loud, so time to wrap it up. There's one thing I wanted to show y'all. This orchid right here. Beautiful phalaenopsis I got from Norman's. Has really, really beautiful, vibrant orange flowers, and I've been waiting for it to bloom. All my other orchids are in bloom. I've just been wondering, like, what's going on with you? they are getting fertilized and everything. Maybe a bit too much light, but all the other orchids are sitting right next to it, and they seem pretty happy. I was watering and fertilizing this morning, and looking at the roots, and then I noticed, oh, what's going on there? Can you, you see that? Yeah, that's a flower bud. Why? What do you do? That's not where that's supposed to be. I've been growing orchids basically my whole life. Never seen this happen before. Let's do do you want me to throw it? Go ahead and give that a throw because he's not going to leave me alone <laughs> until I throw it. Love the enthusiasm, it's the way he jumps in the water. Yeah, sometimes they'll shoot out in inflorescence a flower spike that just is angled down. My guess would be it just kept going down for some reason. Normally they go towards the light. This side of the pot was facing away from the window, so I don't... What happened? I can go ahead and cut it out, I guess just cut a hole in the side of the container there and see if that'll free it. I don't, I don't really want to do that. Now, what the heck, I have a knife sitting right next to me. Ox cutter can just maybe like cut a circle around there. See if that might let it get out and get some air. I'll probably end up repotting this entire plant regardless. So the main thing here is to just be really careful with the blade. Try to not cut any roots. If I do, it's not like the plant's just going to drop dead. Fowls are typically pretty sturdy orchids. That's not something I'm worried about here. And I keep going very gently cut across here. I'm trying to keep it pulled tight so that I don't have to push the blade down very hard. Probably also be a good idea to be using a blade that's not rusted. It's fine. Here we go. That should be interesting. Can't say what's going to happen with it, but I figured may as well give it a try, see what happens. Perhaps it will go ahead and unfurl now that it has access to some air. We can't set that back into its cash pot. That's fine. It's not a very wobbly plant. It'll stay up on its own. Yeah, moving forward, having a giant hole like that in the side of the container could make it more difficult to keep the plant hydrated, though that's not something I'm all that concerned about with the amount of moss that's in here. I'm just gonna have to remember to water it from the top very thoroughly and then to hold it on its side, then let the water rush in through the side. And when that's done flowering or whatever ends up happening with what's going on here. And just there's some tape over the hole, it'd be fine. New roots could end up getting stuck to that tape, but I would imagine that the adhesive over multiple waterings and having the moss against it probably won't have much of a grip to it. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna end up wanting to repot this because its roots are already doing their thing down here on the bottom, see that? So it needs a new pot anyways. I have to wait though, because I wanna wait and see what happens with this. That might look kind of cool having the flower spike shooting out the side of the container coming over to me and laying his head on my leg, getting me all wet. I had, this has been fun. Happy first day of summer, summer solstice. 
great day, best day of the year. I guess spring, pretty cool too, but summer, that's when the heat rolls in. It's when things get hot and miserable outside and everybody's into that. The nice warm summer nights. That's my favorite part of summer, the warm summer evenings, hanging outside, grilling, going to parks, concerts, all that fun stuff. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Can you see? Ugh. Gonna be handling this spot next week, or not next week, Saturday, because I forgot. I'm doing a vlog on a Wednesday. Video after this one. Gonna get the fountain reset. I'm gonna clear out this whole area back here on this hill. Get some shrubs in the ground, whatever excess and paint. Oh, why am I ruining it? We'll talk about that next week. Or no, next video. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What, do you, what are your thoughts on this? I love when plants do weird plant things that you don't expect them to. Okay, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.